Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Yesterday, I talked a little bit about the things I love about C++. And a lot of people asked, well, what do you hate about C++? So, you know, like, like anyone who loves the language, I definitely hate it a little bit, too. So I guess I can tell you about that. The first thing I really don't like about C++ is the preprocessor and the include statements and the fact that everything is is put together by kind of shoddy cut and paste business behind the scenes all the time. I don't like that um, header files are recompiled every time that they're included. Um, that's really stupid. Um, and I don't like the, the long compilation times that come because of this, or in large part because of this. I also don't like um, the template bloat that tends to happen in C++ programs, especially if you're using um, these uh, popular template frameworks. Luckily for me, I don't use those. I just make my own, so I'm kind of careful to make sure that we don't get tons of stuff instantiated all the time. And I, uh, I try to hoist things to a non-typed base class and stuff like that to avoid unnecessary instantiations. But you're always, uh, you're always gonna have some template bloat when you're using templates and it's, it makes me sad. Um, then something recent, or recent, well, ever since C++11, when we got move semantics, uh, which I really like, but uh, I think that they made a huge mistake there that <clears throat> it's very not clear what the state is of a moved from object or variable. Because uh, like the convention with uh, smart pointers is that you move from a smart pointer and it becomes null. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Or like you move from a vector and that like empties out the, the source vector. But then you go and move from a primitive and it doesn't become zero and you move from a, a a naked raw putter and I mean raw pointer and it doesn't become null and I really think that's a this is stupid inconsistency that the language would have been better off if that were consistent I understand that moving is just casting to amp amp but I still think that this inconsistency is an unnecessary cognitive burden um, and I tend to fall into this trap if I'm trying to do something um, with a template programming and, and I'm using um, like a raw pointer um, as a template type or something like that and I, it doesn't behave the way I expect it to. Anyways, um, and then oh, with regards to moved from objects, I also don't like that when you can move from a um, smart pointer say and then dereference it right after even though that's clearly not going to work and the compiler will just let you. I think that that's really stupid and I feel that the language should have given us a way to say um, when I've moved from this thing, it's no good. Like, don't let me use it. Uh, other than, like, resetting it or reassigning, uh, like, a new value that's valid to it and making it valid once again. But the language doesn't let you do that. Like, you can have a, a regular smart pointer and then you move it somewhere and then you dereference it and the compiler will happily let you crash. So this is something that I've tried to solve for myself by using uh, this uh, total trick uh, with uh, Clang attributes. I, I wrote a blog post about it a while ago. It's called uh, Consumed Annotation Checking. So I don't really even know what that's supposed to be for, but I managed to use it to protect myself from dereferencing moved from smart pointer, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, but I think this is something that should have been built into the language instead. Um, anyways, something else I hate about C++ lately is the fact that I can't override operator dot. Uh, I'm a very, very big fan of references, as you probably know at this point. And as such, I would also like my uh, smart pointers to be able to override operator dot because I have these all these special smart pointers and templates and stuff where the whole point of the, of the template is that whatever we're containing is not null. Like we know that it's not null. You can't put anything into this container if it's null. Um, 
but because the language doesn't let me override operator dot, when I have one of these, like I have a non-null own putter, for instance, which is a never null owning uh, pointer, I still have to dereference it with, uh, with the arrow operator, even though I know it's not null. It's like the whole point. And I think that looks really ugly, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Uh, just give me operator dot. Um, so that, yeah, I don't like that one. And I guess in the same vein, um, I, if I have like a, like a local variable, that's a, just a regular raw pointer, um, and then I check if it's null or not, and if it's null, then I return from the function that I'm in, or scope or whatever. Um, after that point, I would really like to be able to rebind or something that uh, name and turn it into a reference so that I can do dot on it because I've checked that it's null. I've left the scope if it was null. Now I know that it's not null, so let me use the dot. I really want to use the dot. Like the dot is important to me because <laughs> um, I've really gotten so used to this feeling of the dot is cool, the arrow is spooky, and uh, it always makes me very sad when I'm forced to use the arrow because of language limitations, or at least what I consider um, language limitations, um, so that, and then another thing that I, I dislike about C++ or the whole family of languages, I guess, is uh, integer overflow and how it's like this sort of ignored uh, thing, it's super dangerous, spooky thing that most, I would say over 95% of programs just like, eh, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, <laughs> my, my own programs included. Um, and this is something that that I haven't really sat down to figure out what to do with, but I know for sure that before I would ever release um, an operating system, I would definitely have to have a story for um, for dealing with integer overflow, especially at the API boundaries, but also internally. Um, because the, the way that the language just lets you overflow stuff and doesn't tell you about it, I think, it, it, that isn't right. Um, so that's something I really dislike. And I guess I would have a, a clearer opinion about it if I had taken the time to actually work out what a good solution would be. But I'll get there. I, I know enough about C++ to know that, that you can solve this for yourself somehow. I just haven't actually sat down to do it. Um, and then I guess, um, I guess another thing I don't like is that um, const uh, overloads. Like I very often, if I'm writing a container like a vector, um, just for an example, and I have, um, say I have like, a, I don't know, a bracket operator, right? Like to, to index into it and, and get the element at a certain index. I don't like that I have to write a const version and a non-const version. I wish that, because it's repetitive, right? And in the case of a vector, it's like, it's very little code. You can usually fit that on one line, but, but if you have some, something more complicated uh, that needs code maintenance, it, it always saddens me when I have to write out like a version where it's T and another version where it's const T, right? Um, and I, I wish that that they would do the same thing as like the spaceship operator in C++20. I wish that there would be some similar thing for const, non-const, qualified things. I don't know how that would work, but I would be happy if I didn't have to repeat myself. Repeating yourself is, is really uh, the source of a lot of sadness and bugs. So the less you do that, the better. Um, I guess I ran out of ideas here. <laughs> so those are those are the things I could think of right now that I really don't like about C++. Um, so, oh, and uh, someone asked me 
uh, what I think about Rust. Um, and I guess my answer is that I don't really think about Rust. Um, I, it doesn't seem to solve anything that I have a real life problem with. Uh, and I think the, the community that's running around and spamming everyone about it, it's like needy and pathetic. Uh, and I don't open the door when these guys in the suit and tie ring the doorbell, so, um, you know. Anyways, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> so, thanks for hanging out with me on the commute, and, uh, please tell me what you don't like about C++. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you can think of something, and we can make a list. Um, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.